As an example of the important concept of tunnel lining, we studied the Orange Fish Tunnel in the Cape Province. The tunnel stretches from the inlet tower at Overston to the Tibus Sprate, a distance of 83 kilometers. Aggregate for the concrete lining is produced from dolerite quarried and crushed on each site. Gyratory crushers and rod mills are used to produce sand. From the stockpiles, the aggregates are taken to the batching plants. Concrete is batched, either wet or dry, on each contract using automatic weighing equipment. Increased workability is one of the results of the use of concrete additives. The moisture content of the aggregates is important and is tested regularly as this affects the consistency of the concrete. Adjustments are made to the volume of water added to the mix. Cement is stored in bulk. On the inlet contract, the mixed concrete is transported to the drop shafts in truck mixers. concrete is then dropped down the shaft. It falls down a steel pipe in the drop shaft and is discharged into a kettle which remixes the concrete at tunnel level. The concrete flows out of the kettle by gravity into the Sputnik agitator cars. The agitator cars are hauled by electric locomotives to the placing gantry. The gantry is rail mounted and travels on the track used for the original excavation of the tunnel. From the Sputnik agitator cars, the concrete is carried by conveyor belt to pneumatic placers. The concrete is then forced by compressed air along feed pipes to the top of the shutter lining. The shutter is approximately 120 meters long and the tunnel lining is placed in a full circle. On the inlet contract, the floor spoil is excavated by a small back actor loading into a muck car. These cars pass through the placing gantry. Before the lining can be placed, high spots have to be trimmed off to give the minimum thickness of concrete lining. The floor of the tunnel has to be cleaned out before the lining is placed. Concrete is brought in for the tunnel lining in Sputnik agitator cars, hauled or pushed by electric locomotives. Test cubes are made to determine the concrete properties. The cubes are crushed to obtain a measure of the strength of the concrete placed in the lining. Regular slump tests are carried out to determine the consistency of the concrete. The ideal slump for concrete in the tunnel lining is of the order of 150 millimetres. Since air entraining agents are used, the amount of entrained air in the concrete is measured. Concrete is fed to the pneumatic placers. The air pressure is important because if there is not enough pressure, the whole system becomes blocked. Concrete is blown into the shutter. There are inspection hatches in each shutter through which the concrete is consolidated with internal poker vibrators. 
the inspection hatches enable workmen to control the placing operation. External shutter vibrators are also used to produce a good surface finish. The shutters are now in position. The invert shutter panel is stripped and the shutter to the arch is collapsed and both sections are carried forward to the leading end of the formwork train where they are re-erected. Using this method, rates of advance of the concrete tunnel lining in excess of 500 meters per week have been achieved. Here the arch shutter is being collapsed to pass through the erected shutter. Advantages of this method of working are that there are no tracks to remove from the completed lining and there is a minimum of cleaning up to be done after the concrete train has moved forward. This shows the alignment of the invert shutter using a laser beam. The erected invert shutter with the collapsed arch shutters following behind is now visible. The shutter is supported by spuds in the invert and crown. On the outlet contract, cement is delivered by different types of rail wagons and is then moved to the batching plant by bulk cement lorries. Batched concrete is discharged into truck mixers. An operation which is necessary prior to any method of lining is to remove the high spots in the excavation which would extend too far into the concrete lining, that is, within the minimum clearance line. On the outlet section of the tunnel, the invert was cleaned first and the material removed to the next nearest shaft. The track carrying the muck cars, which trim the spoil from the tunnel invert to the shaft bottom, is removed after the invert has been cleaned. The track is relayed on concrete blocks on the cleaned excavation. This track is used for the placing of concrete in the sub-invert and subsequently carries the transit mixers for the main tunnel lining. The sub-invert concrete is then placed on the cleaned floor using rail-mounted transit mixers. The object of this is to create a level surface for the sliding floor which carries the placing equipment for the main tunnel lining. As a separate operation, and following on the placing of the concrete for the sub-invert floor, the concrete for the main lining is brought in on the rail-mounted transit mixers from the drop shaft and is placed on the conveyor belt, feeding a hopper above the pneumatic placers which blow the concrete into the full circle shutter of about 120 meters length. The sequence of moving the shutter is exactly the same as on the inlet contract. On the plateau contract, the operation begins with the transport of the aggregates from the stockpiles to the concrete batching and mixing plants situated at the head of the shafts. As the tunnel is over 400 meters below the ground surface on this contract, there are no intermediate drop shafts. Dolerite and sandstone are crushed to produce sand on this contract. Concrete is taken from the batching plant to the drop pipes in the main shafts. On the plateau section of the tunnel, the contractor elected to carry out the floor cleaning operation independently ahead of the placing of the invert concrete. Spoil is removed on the conveyor belt for discharge into the muck cars. The cars travel back to the shaft on the original tracks used for the tunnel excavation. The floor is finally washed with high pressure water jets to ensure that there is no dirt lying on the floor before the concrete is placed. Concrete is transported from the bottom of the shafts to the invert placing gantry by rail mounted transit mixers. These then discharge onto a conveyor belt which carries the concrete along the placing gantry over the freshly laid concrete to a slip form paver which lays the invert. The paver and gantry run on rails. The gantry for placing the invert runs on a separate set of rails which are mounted outside the invert concrete. 
The transit mixers run on a track laid on the completed invert as the gantry moves forward. The shape of the invert is achieved by using a slip form paver. After placing the invert, we now have a state of affairs as indicated on this cross-section drawing. This is the leading edge of the concrete placing operation. The finishing teams are smoothing off the completed invert. The gantry, running into the background, is also visible. Concrete for the arch lining is brought in from the shafts onto a travelling rail-mounted platform by means of transit mixers. From the platform, the concrete is discharged onto a conveyor belt feeding the placers, which are used to blow the concrete into the arch shutters. The excavated side walls are cleaned immediately before the arch shutter is placed in position. The shutters are bolted to the top edges of the invert concrete, which has previously been placed. These shutters are also collapsed and brought forward through the shutters which are already being filled with concrete. The arch lining process, as on the other two contracts, is also a continuous operation. Higher individual rates of placing the invert and the arch can be achieved through using this system, but the combined total rate of progress is not necessarily any greater. This system requires an additional set of tracks to be laid. After the tunnel lining is complete, the track and any spillage on the invert has to be removed. Cores are drilled from the lining. After trimming, the cores are accurately measured and later weighed to determine the density of the concrete. These cylinders are then crushed to test the compressive strength of the concrete. Side splitting of cores is also carried out. Grouting is carried out once the tunnel lining has been placed. The pressure of the grout is maintained by a pump inside the tunnel itself. Holes are drilled through the tunnel lining and cement grout is pumped into any cavities which may exist between the concrete lining and the surrounding rock. Defects in the tunnel lining have to be repaired. Defective areas are first sawn round the edges and the defective concrete is then removed by pneumatic hammers. Samples of material used in repair work are tested beforehand and trials are carried out using various mixtures of epoxy resin to determine their suitability for repair work. All shallow repair holes are primed by epoxy resin and filled with epoxy resin concrete. Fine aggregate is added to reduce the amount of resin required. Deeper repairs are effected by using the shotcrete method. These and any other rough and high spots on the concrete lining, especially at shutter joint and inspection hatches, all have to be finally ground smooth with carborundum stones to ensure a smooth finish of the tunnel lining. <laughs>